What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about confidence. And I expect this video to be a little short and sweet compared to my usual video lengths because it is a pretty straightforward concept of what I'm about to explain to you, but it's something that I've never really heard discussed before and I think is really critical to factor in when you're trying to pursue a solid sense of confidence because it's easy to become either overly confident or just not quite confident enough. So if you're the type of person who really wants to sustain confidence in the sweet spot right exactly where it needs to be and you want to find out how to do that, then just keep on watching. So what is confidence exactly? My personal definition of confidence is the awareness of one's own strengths. It's simply knowing what you're good at, what you can do, what's awesome about you, knowing it, not gloating it, not hiding from it, but just simply having a deep inner knowing that I'm good at this, or this is good about me. Now there are three things that typically threaten sustained, balanced confidence. The first being hate, coming from haters. And the truth of the matter is, some people just don't wanna see you succeed. People who know you, people who don't know you, people who are doing what you do and wish that they could do it how you do it. People who smother themselves in comparison. They prefer for you to be insecure because they're insecure, so they do things to make you feel insecure. Criticize you when you're expressing yourself or when you're showing, displaying your confidence, or pretending like they don't notice things or downplaying things that you do when you do them well. And depending on the foundation of your confidence, that can actually hurt it. The second thing that threatens confidence is arrogance taking it too far. It's when you know what you're good at, you know who you are, you know what your strengths are, but you assume everybody else does. And when you think of other people, you're thinking of them thinking of you, how you think of you. But ultimately that leads to shame and disappointment because you're gonna walk around thinking everyone thinks you're the best. And then it turns out there's a lot more people who don't care or just don't like it. I mean, people are entitled to their own opinions. They might genuinely think you're not as good at something or don't let's say, look as good as you think, and that's okay. So if you have this expectation that everyone just worships you, then one day you're gonna be humbled. So the third thing, which, ah, it's like, oh, this is a little bit encouraging, is lack of self-awareness. You just don't know what you're good at yet. You haven't truly explored yourself or discovered yourself on a deeper level to know what your strengths actually are. You have untapped potential. You don't see yourself clearly quite yet. And there's an opportunity for you to discover more and more things that you can be confident about in you. It's also important for you to stop nitpicking yourself about things that make you different and recognize that those differences and unique traits and qualities are indeed your strengths. So I mentioned the hate and the arrogance and this next piece is actually going to show how those aspects and threats to confidence can be combated internally. And I've mentioned it already in this video, it is humility. Confidence plus humility is the dream team. Oh wait, I'm supposed to be Gen Z, so. So just as confidence is awareness of your strengths, humility is awareness of your weaknesses. It simply says, I know that other people don't see me the way that I see me. I know that there are things that I can't control that I don't have power over. I know that there are things that I don't do as great as I possibly could or as a human possibly could. And that's okay. It recognizes that no one has to think of you the way that you think of you. So every time people agree about your strengths, it's just something to be grateful about, not really something that you're just like entitled to. But just as confidence can lead to arrogance without humility, Humility can lead to shame without confidence. That's not to say that confidence is not inherently good or that humility is not inherently good. They are good things, but any good thing tends to need something to support it. For example, rice is delicious, butter is wonderful, but no one's just gonna sit there and eat a tub of butter by itself. And if you had bland rice, that's quite kind of a disappointment. I mean, let's be real. Some of y'all go eat some bland rice with no salt, no butter, but at any real nigga, Sorry if you're not black, but any real ones, they're gonna put the butter with the rice. And I'm a vegan, so I'm, that means a lot coming from me. And so thinking back to arrogance, how does humility combat that? Well, for one, you have realistic expectations. You would recognize that some people are going to see that I have this strong suit. Other people are gonna deny it, reject it, not see it or not appreciate it. Or, I mean, there's a slew of reasons that people don't agree. 
Humility also means less self-importance. It's not all about you. It's not all about what people think of you. It's more so what you can contribute to the world with your strengths. So if you're not obsessing over whether or not people see your strengths and you're more so focused on how you can use them to help other people, then you would be looking for those people that you're helping rather than looking for the people who don't appreciate it or don't love it. And how does humility combat hate? Well, humble people are just the best type of people. You know you're doing nothing wrong. You're blameless. If you're blameless, you're doing nothing wrong and people are hating on you, they're lost. Like, what can you possibly do about that? Become a bad person too? Stop being the best version of yourself? You know, are you really going to allow someone hating on you for being the best version of yourself or applying yourself in the best way you know how? They're going to allow that to deter you from continuing just because they judge or hate or talk about you no can't do that because then you'll never continue to progress and serve the people that you're intending to serve through your strengths as long as you have a pure heart posture pure intentions and you're blameless the haters they're kind of invisible well i mean just let them be invisible as possible i guess so that addresses two of the threats to confidence and the third one like i mentioned is a lack of self-awareness and that's pretty straightforward, I would say. Certainly, definitely, absolutely easier said than done, but it can be done. I've done it, you can do it too. Know your strengths, know your weaknesses. You can list them out. You can simply be observant throughout your day to day. You can reflect on things that you've been good at or liked about yourself or been complimented about, whatever. You can just take a mental note of what you're good at, what your strong suits are, what you're bad at, what your weaknesses are. Recognize the things that you cannot control because those are considered weaknesses. They're outside of your power. You can't touch them, you can do nothing with them. It can be a current moment weakness, like today, right now, in this moment, I can do nothing about this. Or it can just be a general human limitation. I'm a person, I can't do it. That is especially important for your weaknesses and for your strengths, it's especially important that you know, that you know, that you know that this is your strength, that you know, and you're not going off of what other people think. You're not going off of other people's opinions. You're not going off of other people's responses or reactions to you. You know that that's your strength, so why are you questioning it based on other people? If you're wanting to be actually genuinely confident and not arrogant or not shamed, you know, ashamed of who you are, then you're going to have to know that you know what your strengths are. Also consider that what may appear as a weakness today might be a strength and one of your greatest sources of confidence tomorrow. So it's just about honing your skills, becoming better at whatever you can become better at. And ultimately a weakness, a perceived weakness can actually be your greatest strength in life. So be careful not to mislabel something as a weakness and something that you're powerless about. Also be sure to change your, your perception of life so that you're not self-centered, so that you're not nearsighted, so that you're not self-deprecating, putting yourself down. Just try to see things in, from a bigger, broader, higher perspective so that you can be more open and accepting of yourself and others, even within your strengths and weaknesses. And finally, find peace in that. Find peace in the fact that people are gonna hate on you. People are gonna love you and or hate you because you're good at something or you have these strengths or you're beautiful or you have these things. People are gonna love you and hate you for it because you have it and because you know it. If you are both humble and confident, you're going to attract both love and hate because humility attracts love, confidence attracts hate. So the bottom line is, if you don't hear anything else I said in this entire video, hear this one sentence. Accept that people will love and hate you as long as you are both humble and confident and never sacrifice either of them. And yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was beneficial to you. If you liked it, then like it and I'll see you next time. Bye.